William Thomas Grant, founder of the chain of department stores known as W.T. Grant, was born in 1876. Early in his life, his family relocated from Bradford County, Pennsylvania to Massachusetts, where he showed signs of being a great salesman early on. As a young man, Grant had managed to save up $1,000 from a sales job, and his dream was to open his own store that focused on selling products people needed at small profits. He opened up his first retail store in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1906 at the age of 30, and he called his store W.T. Grant Co. 25 Cent Store. The store was an instant success and appealed to thrifty shoppers. His store was a step above the common five and dime stores of the time and moved products very quickly. More and more W.T. Grant stores were quick to open and the chain grew. W.T. Grant stores referred to itself as being four stores in one with clothing, dry goods, home hardware, and other variety items available for sale. Grant's merchandise was always reasonably priced, and they did not compete with upscale retailers. Most of their competition came from Kresge's, which was a five and dime chain. By 1936, W.T. Grants had grown to $100 million in annual sales. Grant himself had become a very wealthy man, which led him to start the William T. Grant Foundation, which continues to invest in research and philanthropy focusing on human development, education, child care, and poverty. Many of the stores featured lunch counters, and some even had a restaurant called Bradford House. This name was a reference to where Grant had been born in Bradford County, Pennsylvania. The restaurant served up burgers, hot dogs, along with an assortment of other home-cooked meals. The Bradford House restaurant also featured a mascot named Bucky Bradford, which was a pilgrim that carried a dish that read, It's Yum Yum Time and greeted guests as they entered the restaurant. The chain continued to grow throughout the 1950s and 1960s, but changes were coming to the retail experience as families migrated to the suburbs and malls began to emerge. At its height, the W.T. Grant Company had over 1,000 stores, but due to the slow response to changing shopping habits, the number of stores began to decline. During the 1960s, Grants began opening larger stores called Grant City. These big box stores lacked a uniform size and layout, so shoppers didn't feel at home shopping here. In addition, the locations were not in desirable areas because rivals had already set up shop in the best locations leaving Grants to fall behind the other chains. By the 1970s, the company was losing millions of dollars annually, and they began to borrow money. A last-ditch effort to save the company was initiated, in which clerks pushed cashiers to offer in-store credit cards to all customers, regardless of whether they could repay it. This became a huge liability for the company, and the collapse was almost certain. In 1972, William T. Grant died at the age of 96. He had retired from his company in 1966, but remained involved in his foundation throughout the last years of his life. In 1975, W.T. Grant filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This was the second largest bankruptcy filing in American history behind the 1970 filing of Penn Central Transportation. Stores were then closed and everything was liquidated. 
By 1976, every W.T. Grant store had been closed. The legacy of W.T. Grant still remained strong, but only in his New York City-based foundation. His desire to sell people what they needed at prices they could afford was an idea that helped W.T. Grant become the fifth largest retailer in the United States at its peak. For many, the memories of shopping at Grant's are very special. Shopping with family and maybe eating at the Bradford House may have been a tradition for you. The stores carried pretty much everything, so it was fun to shop there, and probably why so many people still miss it so much. <laughs>